Hey guys, welcome to Unacademy uh, and let's crack Neat PG, the YouTube channel for Unacademy, our Neat PG division. So, where the goal is to get you the top educators, quality content, and to give you a great learning experience. My name is Chatanya Mittal. I am currently pursuing my MBBS from Ames, New Delhi. So, I hope you've already downloaded the Unacademy Learning app. And if you haven't, just go to the Play Store and install. You will need an invite code to access all the free content. And that invite code that you can use to access free content is uh, my name, that is Chatanya. Uh, C H E T A N Y A, and you can add 10 after that, right? I'll tell you why this 10 is there. It is because if you purchase a plan, then this code will also give you a discount. So, this code is your solution to buying any subscription on Unacademy or unlocking the free plan. So, as you know, we have the top educators teaching live with us on Unacademy, and educators they are making plus courses for you guys on Unacademy. So, what is a plus course? Plus courses are basically these blocked courses which are available to the subscription but then why am i asking you to download the unacademy learning app because just like on youtube we are making free content for you similarly on the unacademy platform itself we are providing free of cost content and these special classes are absolutely free of cost so take maximum advantage of these special classes and as you can see here that unacademy uh, has live batch courses and not only are these live you can also access the recorded content once the class is over so some students told us that they wanted to ask their doubts. So we have introduced an ask a doubt feature. So your doubt clearing problems are also solved. And for testing, we have special tests. We have weekly tests and regular. We are conducting mock tests. An academy has a 34,000 plus question bank. And that question bank is being utilized to test your preparation, right? So an academy is now a one-stop solution for all your need PG preparation needs. So you can see what are the upcoming batches or what are the latest batches. Uh, the new list will also be there on the application. So we've started batches on the 1st of March and we have batches for FMGE, NEET PG and INI CET. Besides that, you can take advantage of the free tests which are taken on the application. Okay. So I assure you, an academy will provide you flexibility in terms of not only your schedule, not even only in terms of your language, but also how many times you can practice, right? Besides that, with online education, it has become slightly difficult to interact with educators. But on Academy, we have a very robust platform for chatting. So you can chat with the educators. It will feel like you're right in the classroom. And there is an option for interactive polls, just like a teacher asks questions in the class. So we can that can be done in our online classes as well. So you can take the you can take all the benefits of an Academy if you take an Unacademy Plus subscription where you are given all the live experience, the live classes, the live tests, the doubt clearing, the batch courses, the testing, the structured schedule, right? And there is another subscription called as the iconic subscription where you not only get the benefits of Unacademy, but also Prep Ladder because we have recently acquired Prep Ladder. Prep Ladder has some of the top faculty uh, teaching for uh, various subjects and you have video lectures, you have question banks, you have revision courses and you have the handwritten notes. And these notes will be especially useful for revision if you buy them separately. They will cost you 7,000 rupees. Here they're all included in the plan. The one year plan will cost you 49,500. And there's a two year, there's an option to get a two year plan. And that will cost you 69,300. All you have to do is use a referral code that is Chatanya 10. It's a discount code that will give you an additional 10% discount, right? So please use this code while buying an iconic or a plus subscription. The plus subscription will cost you 25,000 and 36,000 respectively, right? So this is how you can apply the referral code. You just go to uh, on the Android phone, you go to the purchase option and this is where you have the option to apply a referral code and this is where you can also apply credits, right? So that is about the pricing of the Unacademy subscription. Now let's move on to today's topic, right? So I hope you've understood everything about the subscription and if there are any details, you can always inquire, right? So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the Davenport diagram, right? So Davenport diagram, do you know any other names for this? Do you know any other names for this diagram? Do you know how this diagram came up? What are the various uh, significance? What is the various What are the various significances of this diagram, right? So it's a diagram of acid-base physiology. Right? It's, a, it's a tool to understand what is going on in the lungs, what is going on in the kidney and what is going on in your blood. Okay. So it's a, it's a very useful tool and uh, there's a way to go about it and uh, it gives you a very good idea of acid-based disturbances. Okay, So it was given by Davenport and Horace. Right? These are two scientists. They had actually given this and uh, it's very well explained in your textbook called Boron. Right? But uh, not going to reference anything. So 
we'll we'll just talk about how this is useful for your neat PG and for your profit margin, right? So let's call it the acid base balance. Uh, sorry, the acid base balance diagram. Okay, for simplicity, uh, Davenport means nothing to you. Okay, so first of all, let's try and understand the first question that can be asked to you is what is there on the y-axis and what is there on the x-axis? So on the y-axis, you have the concentration of bicarbonate right you have the plasma concentration of bicarbonate in millimoles in millimoles right in millimolars right so that is the uh, uh, entity on the y axis whereas on the x axis here you have the ph right and since you have the ph on the x axis you can see that these two quantities have been adequately represented but whenever we talk about acid base disturbances there is always a third quanti uh, quantity that we have to refer to and that quantity is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the heartbeat Right. So for that, we have drawn certain bars, right? And these are called as isobars. Now, why are they called as isobars? Bar means pressure and iso means same. So along these lines, the pressure of carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, it remains the same. And normally it is around 40 mill millimeter of mercury plus minus five, right? Plus minus five. That's allowed. Okay. So I already told you in the uh, video on total body water distribution that this range lies between 35 to 45. So 40 is taken as the average. So the isobar corresponding to 40 mm of Hg, that's that's going to be the central one here, right? So anything, any isobar, and 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 you might have read, and you you might have uh, you it's it's very easy to understand that if I increase that if I increase the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, what should happen to the pH? What should happen to the pH? The pH should decrease and if i increase the partial pressure of carbon dioxide the ph should increase because that will make it more alkaline this will make it more acid right so that's the concept here so the bars the isobars of uh let's say higher values 60 mm of hg they will lie on they will lie, lie towards the they will lie towards the left they will lie towards the left of the normal and the isobars that are having lesser uh concentration of uh, carbon dioxide they will lie towards the right so very important concept to pick from here is isobars. Very important concept to pick from here is isobars. So if you are told that the normal body pH, the normal body pH is 7.4, that is somewhere here. So that will be the normal body pH and the normal concentration of carbon dioxide is 40 mm of Ng. Then according to you, what should be the bicarbonate concentration? Right, it should be somewhere around, it should be somewhere around 24, right? It should be somewhere around 24, okay? Something around this. So that's 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 the ideal that you were expecting here. So through that you have plotted a basic diagram. So now you know that if you know any of the two values, if you know any of the two values, you can find out the third. You can find out the third. Okay. So what is the normal bicarbonate uh, level in your in your body? In your body. The normal is somewhere around, uh, let's say, 24 to 28, or let's say 22 to 28 something like that okay so it depends a little bit on the age it depends on whether you're male or female so i'm not focusing too much on the values i'm focusing here on the concept so let's 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 build this slightly more let's build this slightly more and talk about acidosis and alkalosis right so this was the single isobar that is going to be normal okay so anything that is above it anything that is above it must must be um, an, an isobar where the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is on, is on the higher side Right, is on the higher side. So if I take the normal pH, that is 7.4. So this is normal. This is normal. So everything that is towards the left of this will be acidosis. Everything that is towards the left of normal will be acidosis because obviously the pH is less towards that side. So this is acidosis that I am representing with red. Okay, and you can see here respiratory acidosis, mixed acidosis, metabolic acidosis. Okay. And if you look towards the right of this normal, that is all alkalosis that I'm drawing with green. So this is metabolic alkalosis, mixed alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis. Nothing difficult, right? And if you if you if your only goal is to memorize this this chart, it's very simple. Okay. So respiratory, it comes across each other. It's it's like a clock. Metabolic, they come across each other, and the mixed, they come across each other. So it's it's nothing too difficult to remember. But the important thing is to understand. Okay. So this is very clear. The only parameter for acidosis and alkalosis is what is the pH. Okay. If I ask you is it acidosis or alkalosis, which of these three quantities will you check? pH, eCO2 or bicarbonate? I will obviously check just the pH, right? So that is our uh, criteria for seeing if it is acidosis or is it 
alkalosis, right? Now, if I want to say, is it respiratory, is it metabolic, or is it mixed, right? So now to identify respiratory acidosis, what am I going to look at? To identify respiratory acidosis, what am I going to look at? The only criteria would be, okay, so it's acidosis, so it means that it has to be towards the left. And the criteria for uh, respiratory would be that the carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide should be higher. And that should be the one contributing to acidity because there has to be a respiratory cause. There should be an accumulation of carbon dioxide. So the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, it must be greater than 40. So it will be above this. It will be above this isobar. And the only region where that is happening here, the only region where that is happening here is this one. Okay. Because right now I'm not taking you to the bicarbonate levels because ideally here, the bicarbonate levels should also have some variation. But I'm not going to talk about them right now. We are only talking about how to identify which region has respiratory acidosis. Okay. So that is the region you will mark as respiratory acidosis. Now, if I want to identify metabolic acidosis, what is the condition? First of all, it should be towards the left. And the second thing is that the level of bicarbonate should be, should be very, very low because bicarbonate contributes to alkalinity. Bicarbonate contributes to alkalinity. So level of bicarbonate should be very, very low. So if it is lower than the normal, this was the normal. If it's lower than that, you have got to yourself metabolic acidosis, right? So that is how you identify metabolic acidosis. Okay. Now, how do you identify uh, a case of uh, metabolic, let's say, metabolic alkalosis? In that case, the bicarbonate has to be high. And where do you see the bicarbonate to be high, right? So metabolic alkalosis, the bicarbonate has to be very high. And if you look, if you go above this, right, if you go above this, the bicarbonate level is high. So anything that is above this, anything that is above this could potentially be metabolic alkalosis. And there is this line, that isobar that we are following. And we'll demarcate our territories according to that. We'll demarcate our territories according to that. Okay. And the last criteria, the last criteria is, is the level of, uh, is respiratory alkalosis. And for that, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide must be low. I think you've understood that by now. So region one, region two, region three, region four. Okay. For now, mixed alkalosis and mixed acidosis, they did not exist for you. Okay. But now we must understand what is this? extra line that is drawn here what is the basis of that extra line that is known as the buffer line that is known as the buffer line okay so now what is the buffer line this line so we draw we drew an isobar for carbon dioxide but but what what parameter should we draw for bicarbonate and that is here called as the buffer line now to understand the buffer line you must understand the buffering action of bicarbonate how does bicarbonate act as a buffer do you know do you have an idea of how that how, how that is going to be right so in the davenport diagram there's this concept of buffer line and why is there a concept of buffer line because uh, the buffer line is going to indicate which side you have to go to okay so if you have a very strong non bicarbonate buffer they will very quickly absorb the protons that are released by the formation of bicarbonate and you will have very little change in pH. You will have very little change in pH. If you have a weak non-bicarbonate buffer, right, or if you don't have any bicarbonate buffer, then you will have a much larger change in pH and the slope will be almost equal to zero. Okay. So that's a concept that the buffer line, the buffer line, it has to be somewhere in between. Okay. So it basically gives you the buffering action. It gives you the buffering action of buffering action of bicarbonate. Okay, yeah, to simplify, to simplify, the slope of this line has some significance and that is the only thing that is there. So what it means is that if, if, if the, okay, just give me a second. Wait. The buffering action of bicarbonate, as in, if, if I am standing at this point, if I'm standing at this point and if I decrease the pH, if I decrease the pH, let's say I take the pH to 7.3. What happens? I am trying to make it more acidic. I am trying to make the solution more acidic. So what happens to the bicarbonate? The bicarbonate increases in response. Okay. If I try to make it more acidic, if I try to make it more acidic, the bicarbonate increases more. If I try to make it very acidic, the bicarbonate increases by this much. So that is essentially what is going on. However, if I try to make it alkaline, the bicarbonate decreases. So that is more or less how the buffer line is working. That's, that's enough to understand the uh, concept of buffer line. Okay. 
So now once you've drawn that buffer line, that makes things very clear for you. Everything that is between the isobar and the buffer line, everything that is between the isobar and the buffer line is a case of mixed acidosis. In this case, the cause of acidosis is unknown. It could be anything. And, uh, but it is acidosis is what you know. Mixed acidosis means that there's no clear cut respiratory cause. There's no clear cut metabolic cause. It could be a combination of both. And uh, it is being contributed by both of the parameters, right? So that is the concept here. Now, when you come to the final Davenport diagram, this is the ultimate Davenport diagram, which you have. And see, I have sequentially unfolded the more complicated Davenport diagrams for you. Okay. So have a look. These are all the isobars that are drawn to you. And this is the normal range of pH that is explained to you. Okay. 7.35 to 7.45, right? So anything towards its left is acidosis. Anything towards its right is alkalosis. Okay. So we've already discussed what is the region in which you will have respiratory acidosis and metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis mixed, right? So whatever lies in between here will be mixed. Okay. So you also understand the concept of buffer line now. Okay. Now there's one thing that you have to understand. There's a difference between acute respiratory acidosis and chronic respiratory acidosis. And there's a difference between acute respiratory alkalosis and chronic respiratory alkalosis. Now, what is that difference? Okay. So if you just now, if you just now developed acidosis, your bicarbonate has not had enough time to adjust. Your bicarbonate has not had enough time to adjust. In that case, you have acute respiratory acidosis where your bicarbonate levels are almost normal or slightly elevated. Okay. But when you have had respiratory acidosis for a long time, your bicarbonate levels, they will try to buffer. They will try to buffer. So this makes this the buffer line and here, whatever is happening, whatever is happening during this time that will allow the bicarbonate, that will allow the bicarbonate to buffer some of that acidity. So the pH, it will increase slightly because earlier it was decreased too much and the bicarbonate will have to significantly increase. There will be a significant increase in bicarbonate to buffer the acidosis brought about by carbon dioxide, right? Similarly, this will happen when there is respiratory alkalosis. The carbon dioxide, it is too less. So the bicarbonate also becomes, also becomes on the lower side and it comes here. So the pH, it comes slightly towards normal. So this is a concept of compensation. This is a concept of compensation. What do I mean? What do I mean? Let's say there is respiratory acidosis. That means that pH is less. pH is less. Right? PSCO2, it is more. So now to make this pH more, what do I have to do? I have to increase the levels of bicarbonate. So bicarbonate rises. That is compensation for respiratory acidosis and this will happen when there is chronic respiratory acidosis when there is respiratory alkalosis the opposite happens the ph is too much the partial pressure of carbon dioxide it is too low so the bicarbonate will have to become less to decrease the ph so that is the concept behind respiratory alkalosis and respiratory acidosis i hope i have made myself very clear and uh, the reason is that bicarbonate it can be very easily regulated by the kidney. So renal regulation is very good. So therefore you can have a respiratory or you can have a renal compensation. You can have chronic respiratory acidosis or chronic respiratory alkalosis because uh, the kidney will compensate. But if you have chronic or long standing uh, metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis, your respiratory system, it cannot compensate in long term. It cannot compensate in long term. It can only give you some short term compensation. But uh, your respiratory system, it cannot compensate long term. Therefore, you do not have a chronic metabolic alkalosis or a chronic metabolic acidosis. So that brings us to the end of the concept behind a Davenport diagram. And again, I hope you guys have understood uh, what I tried to convey to you. So I hope you guys liked watching this video. Let's go ahead. So with that note, let's end today's class. And uh, I just want to inform you that thank you so much first of all for watching the video and all the very best for your examination and if you like the video do remember to hit the like button and your likes are an appreciation that i would really really like to see and do subscribe to our channel let's crack neat pg where we have faculty teaching for all subjects almost and uh, we're adding new subjects we're adding new faculty and we're constantly making content for you guys uh, that is free of cost and you can also subscribe to our telegram channels the link for the telegram channels you will find in the description t.me slash let's crack neat pg right and i have uh, another unacademy telegram channel that is at the rate unacademy at the rate unacademy neat pg chetanya right so you can subscribe to these telegram channels to stay updated about the various classes 
and do remember to hit the bell icon to receive notifications about which educator is going live when. If you like the video a lot, you can also drop a comment and uh, about the referral codes, there is one referral code that is Chaitanya 10 or also you can use my special class referral code that is SPCN, a slightly shorter one, right, SPCN and using these referral codes, you will be eligible to unlock free plans on the Unacademy platform, you will be able to unlock all the free content for Neat PG. And you can also purchase a subscription and you will get a 10% off on your purchase. So thank you so much for watching. Take care.